Hello again. This time I'm coming to you from outside. Figured mix it up a little bit. I am going to make this video to be a Punnett Square tutorial, just in case you're stuck and you're wondering how we're getting what we are getting so that when you're doing practice, like that practice packet, um, you can use this video as a reference. And if you want to make yourself a reference table too, you can follow along. So I'm going to show you all the possible crosses. I have two different colors here. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like when we color things in. So I'm gonna use the letter E because it's nice and easy to tell a capital from a lowercase, whoops. So. Homozygous dominant, meaning two of the same dominant gene, we express as two capital letters. So for example, homozygous dominant brown eyes would be two capital Bs, and that would mean there are no recessive hidden genes. So homozygous dominant, homo, same, zygous, same egg, dominant, capital letters. So two E's, homozygous dominant, capital E, capital E. Homozygous recessive is lowercase e, lowercase e. So homo means same, homozygous, same egg. Recessive, we write it as lowercase. That's the gene that could get hidden if there's a dominant present. And homozygous recessive, in fact, is redundant because if it's recessive, you know it has to be homozygous in order to be expressed. The third category combination is heterozygous. The third category or combination is a heterozygous. It's not heterozygous dominant. It's not heterozygous recessive. It's one of each. So it's hetero, which is the prefix mixed zygous, zygote, mixed zygote, capital E, lowercase e. This one's going to look dominant because it has that dominant letter, that capital E overpowering the other, but it carries this hidden recessive E as well. So that is a heterozygous. I'm going to set up my square. I'm just going to do a homozygous dominant, so that's double capital letters cross for both. I hit my elbow when I made that, which is why it's wiggly. There we go. Okay, so. Just like the box method you've been doing in math, you're gonna follow this E from the top, this E from the top into this box, we're gonna write it right there. This E from there comes in here. So you see this combination was one of the four combos when we crossed this versus this. Again, this E now here comes down into this box, this E comes across into this box, and we end up, again, double dominant, capital letters, homozygous dominant. Oh, no, here we go, more capital E's. This time this came from here, and this one's going to come all the way down, if you can see that, there. And then this last one, that E from this side is coming in, and this one's coming all the way down. Okay, so in this case, they all end up the same because we were crossing two dominant and two dominant, so double homozygous, that's what homozygous means, double dominant. When you cross dominant with dominant and the only choice is dominant, the offspring are all gonna be 100% both dominant looking phenotype and dominant genotype, okay? This time I'm gonna do a homozygous recessive, which is redundant. If it's recessive, it's homozygous, if we're talking simple Mendelian. But I'm doing two lowercase e's like this, and I'm gonna cross them with the same thing, two more lowercase e's. So just exactly same method as before. That e from the top came in there, that e from that side came in there. This box, that e's coming down straight, that e's coming across. This box, the top e comes all the way down, this E right here goes into there. And then the last one is this E and this E come into this box. So again, oh, sorry, there you go. I picked E's because you can tell lowercase for, from capital when we have those together. So this one, again, 100% homozygous recessive. In the case of recessive, you don't even have to say homozygous. To be recessive, it has to be homozygous. If you don't know what I'm talking about and all these words are making you have a headache, go back to the video before where I explain those vocab terms. Okay, now it's gonna get fun. I'm gonna cross two heterozygous. So, set up your Punnett square. Heterozygous, we're gonna have a capital and a lowercase. 
I'll show you my square in a moment. And I'm using different colors so you can see what I'm doing. But this one's heterozygous parent one, P1 right there. This one's heterozygous parent two, P2 right there. We're gonna cross these and we see what happens. And I'm gonna try to stay consistent with my colors. So in our first box, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna take this E and this E. This one comes in here. This one comes right there. And they're both homozygous dominant in there. Then in this box, I'm gonna take this E, bring it in. This E goes right there. So we end up with a heterozygous. In this box, I'm gonna take the E from the top, the blue one, the capital, and this E from right here, bring it in there. We have a heterozygous. And in this last box, I take this recessive E and this recessive E, and they come into that box and we end up with a homozygous recessive. So with this one, let's do our percentages. We have one out of four of these boxes is homozygous dominant. So that's one out of four. Oops, that's a two, sorry. One out of four or 25%. Okay, that is a two. Then we have heterozygous actually ended up in two boxes. So we could call that two out of four or 50%. And we're gonna look at the ratio of this table in a second. So our heterozygous was two out of four, 50% because both of these boxes have heterozygous. Then our recessive, that box, one out of four boxes. So that's a one in four chance of a recessive offspring. We can write that as 25%. But sometimes you're gonna get a question that asks for the ratio of heterozygous to homozygous. So if I did homozygous dominant is one of the four boxes Heterozygous is two of the four boxes, and homozygous recessive is one of the boxes, I end up with a one to two to one ratio. Some of your questions are going to ask you about that, so that's why I'm putting that there. Okay, for this one, I'm going to cross a homozygous dominant with a homozygous recessive, and we're gonna see what happens. So, same old box method as before. If we take this E here, bring it right into this little box, this recessive E on top, we end up heterozygous. This E that's dominant into this box, that came from there straight across. This E comes down into this box, ooh, heterozygous. This E over here came from right there. This E from the top coming in there, heterozygous. What do you think? This one coming across from over here, this recessive E coming down, and there we have it, 100% heterozygous. Okay, check it out. So if you crossed a homozygous dominant with a homozygous recessive or just a recessive, all of the offspring are going to end up heterozygous and they will look dominant because remember they have that loud E. So they're gonna end up looking dominant but they all carry that recessive trait. For this square, I'm crossing a homozygous recessive with a heterozygous and we're gonna find out what happens. So this E from right here is gonna come into that box. E, little purple E from the top coming in there. This E is gonna come across dominant there. Recessive E from the top going in there. This recessive E right here is gonna come in there. And this recessive E is there, sorry. And then the last, that's it, hang on, sorry. There we go. The last one, this recessive E came from the top, this recessive E from the side. And then we end up with a homozygous recessive. So I'm gonna write out our percentages there. So we have 50% are going to be heterozygous, or one out of two boxes. These two boxes out of the four boxes are 
heterozygous, so 50%, because that was one of the two boxes. Sorry, two of the four boxes. Actually, I'm going to write it like that. That's easier to understand. Two out of the four boxes, so that's the same as one half. Each of those boxes on the bottom is homozygous recessive, so 50%. This is two out of four. Again, two of the four boxes ended up with those recessive E's. So if you cross a recessive with a heterozygous, you're going to end up with half of the offspring will end up heterozygous as well, and half of the offspring will end up recessive. 50-50 chance. Okay, one more. Our last combination, we are crossing a homozygous dominant up top with a heterozygous. So this is going to come into this box and we're going to get this E and that E homozygous dominant. This E is going to come across, that E comes down homozygous dominant. This E is right here. We typically write the capital first just like when you start a sentence um, or a name or something like that. So this E from the top came down here, this little E comes next to it and same again we're just for convention we're going to start with the capital but this e comes down from the top and this e comes across and we end up with two out of the four boxes are homozygous dominant so two out of four is 50 percent and also just like the last one two out of the four boxes are heterozygous that we're gonna end up with 50% heterozygous. So if you cross a dominant parent, homozygous dominant, with a heterozygous parent, you don't end up with any recessive offspring, all right? Here is a reference table of all the different potential Punnett squares you could get from crossing heterozygous and homozygous genes, and I have them laid out for you. So this table shows you heterozygous versus heterozygous. Here's what the offspring will look like. Homozygous dominant times itself is here. Homozygous recessive times itself. Homozygous dominant versus homozygous recessive. Homozygous dominant versus heterozygous is here. And a heterozygous versus a homozygous recessive is here. So you can have a screenshot of this and I'll upload it to the website too so that you can see it all in one place and use this as a reference table. You can also use the colors to help you calculate your percentages because you can count how many boxes and calculate it from there.